I'm Bill Griffith. Welcome to Bigger Hammer Racing. Uh, this is a vintage Formula V shop. Uh, I have been racing Formula Vs for 44 years. This is my 23rd year in this location. Uh, come on in, I'll show you the shop. Formula V started in 1963, and it has been going continuously both in this country and around the world. The uh, oldest car that we have in the shop is form car number 17. Form car was the first manufacturer of Formula V, of both whole cars and kits. This is number 17, so she is a 63, and she's the oldest gal in the shop. This car, the one I, I call Cucaracha, is the newest car in the shop. She is a 1972. She is a one-off built in Ohio by Alan Truhoff. Uh, she came to me some years ago. Uh, and as you can see, she's not the prettiest race car, but she is very quick. We're, we're getting her to the front. As we move along here, you're going to see uh, over the years, there's been different marquees. The form car was the first manufacturer. The second manufacturer was Auto Dynamics. Uh, this is a, a 65 Auto Dynamics that we are in the process of restoring. This is basically what we do. We find these old cars, um, or the owners do, they find them in uh, barns and in garages. Uh, any number of places and they end up with us and we take them depending on what kind of shape they're in we take them all the way down to the frame and we retro them to what they would have been like in the uh, 60s and 70s because race cars have a tendency to evolve as people own them so they update them along the way until they become so uncompetitive they end up in those barns and in those garages so we take them all the way down to the frame and then we go back to the way they were in the 60s and 70s. These are Zincs. Zinc made literally thousands of these little folding Vs. Um, they were originally called the Z5, the one that was actually built uh, in this country. And then Zinc actually moved to Mexico and he started making kits. And so some of them are called C4s. Uh, I think in my lifetime, I probably uh, uh, put eight of these together from kits. And then, of course, we, we stared a bunch of them. But as you can see, they come in all colors, but they're all basically the same body style. They started in, uh, in 65, 66. And you can kind of see the evolution of this car from um, the old girl over there that's pretty wide and heavy, and they started getting slicker and smaller. And then in 68, 69, two Ford engineers put together the Lynx. And this is a very popular business car. You can see we have two of them right here. They got uh, skinnier, um, more difficult for larger vintage type drivers to drive, but nevertheless, very, very successful race car. And then, uh, Auto Dynamics, Ray Caldwell was the owner of Auto Dynamics. And along the way, in about, um, about 69, 70, he left Auto Dynamics, he started his own company, and he built this, which is called the Caldwell, D13 Caldwell. So you have basically in here, you have all the way from uh, 1963 uh, to 1972, uh, the evolution of the Formula V. Okay. We use the, the uh, 1200cc uh, V-Dub, which would have been the 40 horse up through 1965. Now, in, in, in reality, uh, these are mostly the universal cases because they have uh, dual pressure relief and bigger uh, galleys and all that. Uh, because 
the 40 horse red line was 3,750. Well, we shift these from uh, third to fourth at 6,000. So every part in it is lightened and balanced. But we are restricted to stock compression, uh, stock valve cut, and stock volume. Now, one of the things we are allowed to do is we can take the stock intake manifold and we can stretch it and acid flow it so it flows better. We also, we don't use the 40 horse carburetor. We use the 36 horse carburetor. And here, I'll show you why we do that. The 40 horse carburetor has a fixed Venturi. There's nothing you can do about it. We are allowed, if we use the, the PC1, uh, we are allowed to remove the Venturi and use a razor thin Venturi, which of course increases the flow. We also disconnect the float because these little cars will pull 1.2 lateral Gs. And so you need the float to be able to move back and forth as the fuel slices in the carburetor. So we disconnect the float. Well, when you use a plastic float, you had to weigh it so that it would not turn over, but it would still turn over and the glue would come off and it would give you a problem. Then we went to this, which is a brass float, but it got stuck because it's not much smaller than the, than the float chamber. So now we use this little device. It cannot turn over, it floats, and so therefore we don't have any problem with, with our floats. So basically we have, we have made a very skinny Venturi, jetting is free, uh, the float is free, but other than that, uh, that's a carburetor off of V-Dub. Formula V is based on the 1965 bump. So, uh, to the rules, we have to use the link pin front end. And then as you see, these are stock trailing arms and it's a stock uh, a front beam. Now, we don't use two sets of trailing arms. We remove one set of trailing arms and we put in a solid bar. So that if you see here, there's an adjuster there. We have a solid three quarter inch bar that runs across here. So what this becomes is this becomes a really serious anti-sway bar because the cars only weigh about 850 pounds. So you don't need both sets of trailing arms like you do in, in the stock bus. So we use a stock set in most cases and we, uh, you can bend them, you can over torque them to set your ride height. But Absolutely, except for that, this would be out of a 65 buck. The transaxle that we use is basically a, a stock bug, with the exception that if you'll notice, this is a mid-engine car, not a rear-engine car. And it's this is oversimplification, but we basically take the ring out, we go around to the other side, and we stick it in the other side. So we, ha we use our shifter is the same as in above, one, two, three, four, except reverse is over to the left and back, not up. And, and we have a, the shifter right here. The gears, uh, we're allowed to use any gears that were in uh, up to the uh, 72 uh, bus or sedan. Uh, however, for vintage racing, we must use these tall tires. So we typically use just the standard uh, ring and pinion. We use the 0.89 fourth and we use the 0.26 third. And the first and second, there are no good first and second VW stock gears. And so we basically use first and second from getting to the grid out under the racetrack and when we're on the racetrack, we strictly use third and fourth gear. Uh, the reason I got into Formula V was that um, uh, many, many years ago, when I was in high school, uh, I owned a 56 Gia. And I obviously wished I still had that. Uh, but 
it was the only car I could afford. And it was a beat up old car in 1964. But it was how I learned, started to learn how to be a mechanic. So I knew a little bit about VWs. I knew nothing else. Uh, I got out of the service in 72, and I had always had a desire to try to go racing. Well, I didn't have any money. Uh, I had a young wife and a baby daughter, so uh, against all reason, I went out and I bought a, an old beat-up Formula V, and that was in 1973. And we really never looked back. Uh, along the way, I've, I've had a, a 64... Uh, Gia convertible. I've had a 62 uh, moonroof bug. I've had bugs along the way, but this is my passion. This is what I love to do. And uh, we have raced continually, except brief periods um, uh, uh, when I was unable to race. I, 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 unfortunately, this is racing. Occasionally, you'll have a situation where you may not be in physically able to race, and I've had one uh, one of those here. But in any case, uh, I have raced continually since 1973. Uh, along the way, we uh, we started learning how to go fast, and and uh, uh, other people came to us and asked for help, and so. By the mid-90s, um, I had four of these in my garage and a two in a neighbor's. And my wife uh, was making enough money that we wouldn't starve to death if I quit my day job. So we opened the shop uh, and we have not looked back. I have been fortunate enough uh, to win uh, four Sports Car Club of America Formula V championships and four uh, vintage championships and I've been first loser about 10 times. But no matter how long I do this, the reason that my passion continues is that these, uh, these little cars are so closely matched because we're using 50-year-old parts and we are restricted by the rules to where uh, all of the cars are very similar in their speed potential and it comes down to the driver. Uh, vintage Formula V particularly is expanding uh, around the country. Our club, Corinthian Vintage Auto Racing, celebrated the 55th birthday party of Formula V at Hallett Motor Racing Circuit in April. And we had 40 entries.